Hello and welcome back to linuxjobber.com where we prepare you for a Linux job. My own name is Sean Me Joseph and my email is showpopulous at gmail.com. Please feel free to send me any questions and I'll be happy to answer them for you. For today, we would be looking at <coughs> go to our website linuxjobber.com and we'll be looking at user administration linuxjobber.com and we'll be looking at Linux user administration. So these are the videos for, for the tutorials if you want to learn anything about user administration and today we'll be looking at one of the practice tests and the question we'll be looking at today says to run this script here and using TLS encryption set up your client system to get user information and authenticate users using the LDAP server. Here's the question. Now this question here is extremely important. I cannot stress enough why this particular question is extremely important because it has to do with LDAP. So you think about it, no matter what you're trying to do in system administration, whether it's Linux or Windows, you would have to deal with authentication. So whether or not you're preparing for your Red Hat Certified Systems Administrators exam or you're trying to get a job <coughs> with Linux or you're just setting up a an environment for your uncle's business no matter what your plan is you will need this one here you would you cannot get away from this thing here and it's very very important that you understand the basics of user administration and authentication which is usually done whether it is with Windows or with Linux the back end is LDAP server usually and there's just no way to get around this one here <clears throat> you have to try and learn this one here so I'm gonna go into the details here to explain it so this video might be a little lengthy but that's because this is extremely important now I'm going to now this question here is gonna be done in two steps step one is that I'm gonna set up a database now let's go and look at the two steps. Step one here I'm going to look at setting up LDAP server and then step two I'm going to set up the security on the LDAP server and I'm going to show you why it is important to, to split them up and set them up separately and then step three I'm going to connect them together so let's go when I talk about security just to let you know I'm talking about the TLS. That's what the TLS means for. It stands for. So um, let's get started so we don't waste too much time on that. Now, to get started, I'm going to explain the basics of everything so you can understand what is going on. If you don't understand what is going on, it's very difficult to pass an interview because you can't really explain what is happening with authentication or LDAP. And also, also you have to really understand what is going on so that if you're setting it up you can understand what each step is doing so let's take a look at what is actually happening what's actually happening is that you have an LDAP server that you're trying to set up right here this is your LDAP server and you're trying to set it up now without all of this other setup here a user can connect to an LDAP server only if he trusts the LDAP server meaning that he's sitting in front of the LDAP server but that is not usually the case so his user is sitting down in front of his computer somewhere else and is trying to connect to some central server meaning he's trying to log into his machine and his machine must go and authenticate from some server some other server somewhere now between the user and that server anything can happen in between there might be somebody spoofing there might be another computer in between that's pretending to be this server and this user is authenticating elsewhere is going outside of here and he doesn't know it so now we have to go and um, set up this server here so our step one is to set up the server meaning the user can get information we're not worrying about TLS, we're not worrying about security. Then step two 
we will be setting up the security meaning that we're going to go and get a certificate this certificate right here we're going to get one for this server then we're going to get a key for this server that way and the, the reasons for that is that whenever this user tries to connect to this server here this server must prove that this name belongs to this server and this server owns this name and the only way to do that is with this certificate now when you use security between this server and this computer information must be encrypted now when information is sent to the user to the server I mean to say encrypted this is the key that the server must use to decrypt that information so all of this is important and the reason for these other ones is that think of this like a government authority now this is the government in a, in a human world this is the government the government is issuing an ID think of this certificate as an ID the government has a government agency this is the government agency so a standalone stand alone root CA certificate authority is the government the government issues an agency the permission to issue IDs now this agency issues IDs to servers that's basically what is happening so when you hear certificate authority it's just either the government agency or the government itself that's issuing an ID that's all it means it's not very complicated so let's get started with step one which is to set up the LDAP server now the question does not does not ask us to set up an LDAP server so I will not be setting up an LDAP server but I will show you how to set it up and what I have done to get it ready so that the user can log into it let's take a look at that so here we are in my Linux environment and my server is the name of my server is Minidel and the name of my local machine which is a client is localhost so now let's take a look at the video the image again so you understand what is happening so this is Minidel the LDAP server now this user is sitting on a computer and that computer is called localhost now this user well, now we're going to show the setup of this server and we're going to get this user which is the client which is localhost to connect to this server let's do that so this is the localhost and we go to the server so here's the server which is Minidel and all that has happened all that you need to know is that you must install so let's use RPM you must ensure that you have you have this package open LDAP so you must have this package open LDAP server if you don't have it you have to go ahead and install it now this is on the server the question does not ask us to set up this server so I'm not going to be setting up the server I'm just showing you what's on the server side you're only concerned with doing the client side I'm just showing you what's happening what happened with the server and the status of the server and then you don't need this but it's good to have the LDAP client on the server side so you can do testing so this is all what the server needs and then once it has this tool <clears throat> you can start the service and I'll show you the configuration file the configuration file is actually in now let's do a cat of the configuration file open LDAP server slapd.conf so here is this configure here's the configuration for this LDAP server and and here's the configuration file uh, you know open uh, etsy open LDAP open LDAP .conf. 
and what you have to do here here's this here's it it starts from here and you scroll down just about maybe um, maybe about 50 lines down or maybe 60 look for somewhere where it says root password and you change it you can put any password you like I'm just showing you this this is not the right way to do this you would put a real password and this is the way to actually do it I'm just showing you this for an example now you can use this for setup but never ever set up an LDAP server without encrypting the root password now you want to set up also the base domain of this server and here's the base domain of my server the domain is called show domain and the extension is com in other words you can say show domain dot com now the administrator of this domain usually called the manager root root dn is show populous and here's his name right here cn show populous and that's all you need to do here when you when you are done with this then you can just you can just basically start the server and when you start the server always use check config to ensure that the server keeps on running but i will restart the server just to be just to show you so what you what i do here is service elder restart so I'm just showing you once you do all of that you start the server now this user doesn't have permission to start the server so it didn't start so now so now that's all you need to do on the server side you might have to shut down the IP tables just to allow the traffic through and after setting setting up LDAP you have to go and restart and implement your IP tables um, but that's all you have to do for now just to set up the server now let's go and set up the client to connect so what you have to do is you go to systems administration you go to authentication and then you log in as root on this local machine here and then it gives you the auth conf authentication dot uh, authentication configuration um, screen now you can do this manually but it's usually very um, complicated so it's better to use either this or you use the the other um, text which is system auth conf file so if you're using this one here if you're using the auth configuration file you check LDAP once you check LDAP you um, go to authentication make sure the LDAP is also checked and then look at your options and you can select whatever you want to select here and that's it and when you click OK you will go and do all the configuration in the BAP all the um, PAM configuration it will do that for you in the back it makes it easy so once that is done you can now query your LDAP server so if I query my LDAP server now and then I'm using that B option querying my show domain and here's the IP address of my LDAP server right here so basically this is my search so I'm on the clients now querying the LDAP server and if I do this look at that it gives me number of responses for it gives me a lot of entries in my LDAP server so now we're done with step one and we'll go to step two but there are some things that I need to point out to you unfortunately basically let me show you this part first showdomain.com here's the entry in the database in the LDAP database and everything is here and um, this is the organizational unit users users show domain show domain uh, domain user is our user and there's only one entry in the database and that's domain user is the name of a person called domain user and the organization is called users and the domain is called show domain and the extension is com which is dot show domain dot com 
this is the name of the user seeing this domain user it's just a sample person you could just be Joe Blow um, and that, that'll be the end of it this is all we need to do for the first part of the question now let's take a look at the question again if you look at this question it says to connect using Taylor set up your client to get information so we've done the part where it says set up your client to get information user information and, authentic and authenticate users so now let's test the authentication let me log in as this domain user even though it's done I just want to test it so you can see it so I'm switching user on the client to domain user and it's asking for the domain user's password and I believe the password is secret uh, incorrect password so what we need to do take a look at this this is very interesting if you look at this you know you can add the password it's the password you can see that that user is not in let me grab this so you can see it clearly grab domain so that user is not in it's not a user on this local machine but if you use get end password look at this now look up here you will notice that this person is not a user look up here you can see that this person domain user is not a user on this machine look everywhere you won't find that person if you look at this now you can see that the user is not in here but if you use get and password use you get the user let's see, let's let's use that one and get the let's try has been get and password hmm, where is the get ends password so I use where is to find my get ends what is wrong okay to get my get ends and it tells me my get ends is here and now I'm gonna run the get ends Okay, the user just doesn't have access to get end. That's what the problem has been all along. So if we do a sudo get end password, hmm. password, you can see domain user is here, right here. Even though this domain user is not in the local database, it's not a local user. So now we're going to log in as this domain user even though he's not a local user on this machine we're still going to log in so now we log in as domain user let's just say um, switch user to domain user and password I believe it's secret okay so now this user has been able to log into the LDAP server so now we're finished with the first part of the question now we're going to go and use TLS encryption which is the second part of this question so now we're finished with step one we're going to go to step two and use TLS so let's get let's go and do that so the first thing we're going to do is go back to the server ensure that the server gets an ID card which is called a certificate from an authority think of it like an agency like a government agency and also a key that the server will use to decrypt messages so now let's go and get that so on the server now as root we do we use the program called OpenSSL to do a request for a new key and we're gonna tell it not to encrypt the key 
and the name of the key localhost key and then we're going to generate a request here this is a new request here for our certificate authority to help us to give us to sign our certificate meaning a request for an id in a, in a human world you call this a request for an id so you're basically now let's take a look let's take a look at the configuration again so what happens is this so you're basically making a request on the server here you're basically requesting this certificate authority to sign to give you an id meaning issue um a signed certificate you have a certificate but it's just a form in other words it's a form that needs to be signed so we're going to ask this program to generate a form we're going to fill out the form but it's not signed yet meaning you have an ID template but it's not an issued ID it's not an authorized ID so we're going to ask this government agency here which is a certificate authority here to issue an ID for us in the human world basically but in the computer world you are making a request for the certificate authority to issue a signed certificate for this computer to use that way the computer can present it to any com other computer talking to it that its name is whatever name you see here and they would believe this computer so now let's go and do so now let's run that see now it's generating a key the first thing it's going to do is generate a key then the second thing it's going to do is that it's going to collect information that the server is going to prevent present which is going to be written on the server certificate so when a certificate is issued the certificate must contain some information and it's trying to collect the, those information now so it's asking for country let's say USA country name so let's say USA US state or province name let's just say Maryland locality let's just say PG organization name show domain organization unit name test department common name now this one is very important you need to use the name of your server so the name of my server is minidel dot show domain dot com now I don't believe you need the full now let's see I don't believe you need the full so now email address let's say something something at yahoo.com a challenge password let's just say secrets because just because we've been using secret and an optional company name um, show domain company so now we have if you look at this directory now inside the local directory we have just done two things we have created the certificate request and we have a key so now somebody has just given us a key and they have the person has a now we have a request for the person to issue an ID or in a computer world what you call a certificate we have a request out for the for somebody to sign that certificate so now let's go and get that certificate signed so now we're just requesting this authority here think of it again like a government agency to sign our certificate here for this server here in other words in the human world you say we're requesting an ID we have filled out a form to get an ID from a government agency so now 
Let's see how that is done quickly. So now I write this request here. I write this command here to do the signing. So what this command is saying basically we're using OpenSSL again and we're using the 509 to make a request that's going to last for 365 days and we are using we're telling it to use our form that we filled out which is the localhost.csr that we just filled out is just nothing but just a form and we're using it to we're telling it to sign the key you know in the human world you say give me an id but you are in the computer world you would say sign my certificate so and this is our key that we have locally that we're going to use to decrypt information and at the end of it all meaning out give us a certificate a signed certificate called show domain dot crt otherwise show domain dot certificate in a human world you say give me an id now so when we run that command now it gets the private key it's unable to write so the only reason it's unable to write is because this user does not have permission so we're going to give the user a permission to do that it's asking for password and it's trying to generate the certificate now good so now it's all done if you look at the local directory now this time around you will see a show domain certificate look at that so now we have two important things show domain certificate now the computer has a signed certificate and it also has a local a key that it will use to decrypt information that's sent to it encrypted so now we go and see how far we have gone with our step two so now this computer is ready and um, the user is also ready they can connect we just have to enable the TLS it is not enabled yet so now let's go and enable it we're still on step two and we're going to enable now so the first step is to tell our LDAP server about this certificate and we will do that by putting the certificate information inside the LDAP. Now let's do that. So the first thing we're going to do is copy our two important files to the directory where they're needed. So it's the key and our certificate. Those two. So we're going to do a copy. Or we can do a move. Doesn't matter. Copy the localhost.key and then the show domain dot certificate CRT to Etsy openl.com here's where they're going to be needed so we're going to move them down there so now let's see them okay so now that's done then we're going to create a file uh, the, we say, then we're going to create we're going to add to the directory to the LDAP directory this, this information which is what we talked about before so I have this file called um, you have to use an LDIF file you can read up on LDIF if you need to uh, here's my LDIF file and all this is does all this is doing is that it creates a, creates a distinguished name it's making a change it's, which meaning that it's going to update the LDAP database and it's adding certificate file this attribute here it's adding it this one here so and you're gonna do show domain dot crt that, that's a certificate and it's adding these two attributes the certificate file it's telling the database where it is which is where we just moved it to and also the certificate key file which is the key and it's telling it where our key is located where we just moved it to and that's it so now let's go and put it together so the first so one of the first things we have to do is to load our changes into LDAP so we use the command LDAP modify 
right here L dot modify and we'll put in the file name and then our distinguished uh, our name which is the manager's name that we put in before the domain and then we're using the secret we're using our password which is secret and here's our domain name so we load it boom modifying entry so it did modify the entry and it's done so now the so next we tell our LDAP to use secure layer so let's do that very quickly so we do VI XC open LDAP slapdate.conf let's use sudo so we have the permission to do it and then we're looking for okay so I'm going to okay so look at where it says the next the next three lines allows use of TLC so I copied these three pasted them down here to save time I stopped the video I copied them over I put the path to the show domain certificate as the government body because we don't have another one and the certificate file show domain dot CRT and then our the path to our key I put all those three in there and I also told slab D to use LDAP S which is the secure layer equal to yes those are, that's, those are the only changes that I made and then let's go ahead and now we would have to restart our LDAP server sudo service LDAP restart and now if we check on the port 636 which is a secure port very good we have the service listening on this port obviously you can see that it's permitting all IPs which is not secured but I'm just showing you what we need to do for this so now the next step is to try to connect with our local host which are which is our client but obviously we need to tell the client also where the certificate authority which is the agency in the human world you say the government agency that issues the ID would have to tell the local client where the certificate authorities file is located so I'm going to go and do that I'm going to stop the video so I can type it in and it won't be so slow so it's already long enough the video so let me go and tap that very quickly and I'll show you what I did so on the clients now here I am and I'm going to edit the Etsy open open LDAP LDAP.conf to allow um, TLS so if I open it up so these are the two things that I added here and you can see not that um, this was generated this was auto generated and um, so I added the certificate directory as you can see I am using myself as my own government in, in other words in the human world we will say my own government meaning that I'm self satisfying the same certificate that I generated for use by this computer is the same certificate that I'm calling the certificate authorities certificate and here it is and as you can see that's what I just gave the clients the path to it on the on the server so that when the client tries to connect it will look in this it will tell the server to look in this path and say give me the certificate authority certificate and then if you use CLS re request certificate if you use demand 
self certification will not be allowed. So since this is self certification, we will not use demand. This is very important, otherwise, you would get an error. So instead, you will use um, request certificate allow, meaning that it will allow self certificate. So now let's test it. So now let's try to connect. So now we're going to run LDAP search. We're going to do, check the base and we're going to look at host uh, uh, our same host on LDAP secure LDAP S. And we can put the port 636 for secure or we, we don't have to put the port. So if we run this, you can see we have our answer. Now to test that um, TLS is actually running, you can actually put demand on the LDAP.com file. So in other words, we tell it to demand and then we remove the one that says to allow. So now it will reject self-certification and that's how I'm going to test. And if you run this, it gives you an error. Meaning, and then you can see in the error that it is trying to use SSL, it's trying to get a server certificate, and that's all it has to do. Now, again, this is very, very important. Whether you are going to set this up on your own, whether you are going to go and work for somebody, whether you are writing the Red Hat exam, like RHCE or RHC, RHCSA, you really have to know this thing here. If you have any question on this one here, please send me an email so I can explain it to you. But no matter what you're doing, you will need it. Even if your environment is going to use Windows Active Directory, you still need to know how this thing works. Now, this is a very long video. I thank you very much for watching. Like I said before, my own name is Sean Me Joseph. This is LinuxJobber.com where we prepare you for Linux job. My email is showpopulous at gmail.com. Please send me an email and I will be sure to answer your questions. Thank you very much for watching and have a nice day.